Hi, this is Nick Williford and Manos Brilakis presenting case 293 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a flus aortoosteal CTO of the right coronary artery. The patient presented with significant angina and was referred for PCI of the right coronary artery. This had a flus osteal occlusion on coronary CT on the MIP. We see uh, there is significant calcification of the ostium. There is a previous stent on the right coronary artery and there is uh, a bifurcation of the posterior lateral and the PDA distally. These are the axial views, and once again, it's a flush occlusion. We do have some calcification into the right coronary artery that originates at about 12 o'clock, so it is an anterior takeoff right coronary artery with some calcification further down into the vessel. This is the coronary angiogram. There was no ability to engage the right coronary artery with a catheter, so these are just the left shots. We do see that the patient has also a CTO of a small circumflex. There is uh, some disease on the mid-LAD, little haziness there. There are previous stents on the LAD, and the right coronary artery is feeling retrograde close to the proximal segment. Because of the lesions into the LAD, as well as the circumflex and the CT of the right, we decide to use hemodynamic support with an Impella CP device. What we have here is an aortoosteal CTO of the right coronary artery. The length is unclear, but it's probably not too long because we do see filling of the right coronary artery uh, way back all the way to the proximal. The distal vessel has some diffuse disease, but overall it's not too bad. And there are septal collaterals filling the left from the LAD. The LAD itself had previous stance. Because of that, we had to go on a primary retrograde approach given the osteal occlusion. Before doing that, uh, we perform balloon angioplasty of that mid LAD lesion since we want to minimize any risk for ischemia. After doing that, then uh, we advanced a guide wire into the septal branch, and because of the previous stent into the LAD, we did inflation of a 1.5 millimeter balloon. Despite that, we had some difficulty delivering a microcatheter into the septal, but after switching to the turnpike LP, we were able to advance into the septal branch. We then did surfing using a SUO03 guide wire, and uh, the wire very easily went right down straight into the PDA, and we see it's moving uh, all the way into the proximal right coronary artery. So fairly easy crossing of the septal collaterals that were well developed, and the wire is essentially all the way to the proximal LAD, confirming that this is a relatively short CTO. Here is a tip injection after we deliver the turnpike LP all the way to the proximal, and we do see the calcification of the proximal right coronary artery. We did multiple attempts to cross with the retrograde wire. We did use a Mongo that seemed to be going into the subaortic space. We did use some stiffer wires, guy next to, and for crossing the RCA or the osteal CTOs, it is important to use the RA of U and confirm that the wire is going backwards, which is where the ostium of the right coronary artery usually is. Here we did some cusp injections to see if we're going in the right direction, but uh, once again, um, the wire seems to be stuck in that area. We decided to use the Carolino technique with a, a small contrast injection, but unfortunately, I think we had dissected in the subaortic space, so we have a little subaortic hematoma. And this is how it looks on the REOU. This can be a challenging situation. Essentially, one can try different stiff wires trying to make the bend towards the left. We did try a Confianza Pro 12 wire, and eventually, we were able to advance the Confianza Pro 12 into the order. Unfortunately, we could not get it into the guy catheter. Therefore, we decided to use a snare. We used an 18 by 30 millimeter and snare. And we did have some difficulty. We see that we're in a different plane with the end snare and the guide wire. Sometimes one can get things done into the brachiocephalic artery, but here it was uh, fairly challenging. So we brought the snare back and tried different approaches, trying to pull the wire back and advance it while the snare was opening and closing, trying to change the position. Again, we're out of plane. 
um, we change the position of the wire again and going back and forth with the snare. And eventually here we were able to capture it and uh, have it into our snare. Um, this is still a Confianza Pro 12 wire. I want to be careful not to pull too hard because if we kink it there, it may be hard to come off the snare. So what we did is uh, we uh, moved a little more towards the tip of the wire that is a little softer, and then we pulled it back. And now we are able to push and pull. We are pushing the wire from the retrograde guide and pulling gently with the snare. And we can see it slowly going down, but unfortunately it came off before it came off the guide. The solution to that was to use a smaller snare, uh, we used a 2 by 4 millimeter, the little and snare. And uh, by doing that, we were able to snare again the tip uh, of the Confianza Pro wire. And uh, keeping the tension, we were able to bring it backwards uh, towards the introducer. We externalized the wire. We got uh, a microcaster to go all the way into the undergrade guy caster. And then we removed the Confianza and we switched for an R350 which unfortunately also came off, and then we had to snare it inside the guide caster. But eventually, we did have an externalized guide wire, providing us with exceptional support. We disengaged the retrograde guide and did balloon angioplasty of the proximal right coronary artery that uh, restored undergrade flow. There's still significant disease and some calcification. That is why we did intravascular lithotripsy and uh, stented the right coronary artery with two overlapping uh, drug eluting stents. We then wanted to flare the ostium because it was quite challenging to engage the RCA. And as we remember from the CT, it was anterior takeoff. This was the osteal flush balloon. The osteal flush uh, was too deep here, so we don't have the uh, bigger proximal balloon. So we pulled it back a little bit, and now we have nice flaring of the ostium. We have the anchoring balloon in the right position, and then the larger balloon is essentially pushing the stent struts against the wall of the aorta. Especially useful in this case because we had the aortocoronary dissection. And this is the final result. Nice flow into the right coronary artery. We still have this small aortocoronary dissection. Um, we don't do different anything different for these dissections. We just observe them and make sure we stand the ostium and dilate it. And these usually absorb by themselves. And then we checked the left system and there was no injury of the left uh, system during the procedure. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that when there is a flush aortoosteal CTO, there's no other way to succeed in recanalizing this unless one goes retrograde. Puncturing into the aorta from the retrograde approach can be challenging. A very useful view is the RA of view. We want to see the wire go posteriorly in the RA of view. Otherwise, if it goes anteriorly, that is likely to end up into the pulmonary artery. In this case, using a Confianza Pro 12, we exited into the aorta, and then we used large snares to snare the wire and externalize it. The wire came off the snare, and then we used a smaller snare, a 2 x 4 end snare, to actually capture the wire within the guide catheter. Engagement was very challenging here, so we used the osteal flash balloon to make the osteal part of the stand well opposed and to facilitate re-engagement in the future. And then we did have a small aortocoronary dissection, which is something to observe and uh, typically resolves within a few weeks. Thank you.